Hey, welcome. Hey, Luke, I appreciate you being here. Sorry. So I, I just said this uh, live a second ago, but we had a whole bunch of technical difficulties. We're trying a new platform and, and doing some cool stuff, trying to trying to get this message out. But man, today just didn't work out. You know, I do technology for a living too. And, and this, it, I use this platform to record a podcast and yeah, this is, this is fun. So uh, anyway, so Luke, thank you for joining me. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and, and kind of your background. Sure. Um, yeah, man. I'm happy to be here. So, uh, name is Luke Dupron. Um, I'm a men's fitness health physique coach um, at the Fitmen Project. Um, so, as far as background, I've done pretty much anything and everything in the health and fitness space, from personal training, corrective exercise, performance work, um, to now where I primarily work with entrepreneurs, business owners, really busy guys who um, need to level up their physique, their energy, their health, their confidence but they're not going to be spending all day doing it because they got some of the bigger missions and bigger goals. So um, ultimately, yeah, I help guys kind of navigate that, um, that, that strategy of um, managing their health and fitness in a time sensitive way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I think, I think you've heard a little bit of my story, I, the nacho dad, you know, I was 350 plus pounds yeah, and, man. You know, I was busy and I was, I was good at work or whatever, but I was miserable. I had heartburn and my back hurt and like, I was pre-diabetic and like all yeah, of the things. Right. And, and I was eating like shit. Um, you know, I was drinking a 12 pack of soda a day, like all of, I was doing absolutely everything wrong. Right. Um, and, and I didn't, I didn't change it all overnight. Like if I look at my life, what it was before compared to now, like, you know, I don't drink soda. Like I drink water. I'm at a standing desk. Like I, I ruck every day. I ruck three miles a day. I'm carrying heavy weight. I work out. Like I do all of these things. You know, uh, I, 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 I don't eat breakfast. Like all of these things that I've, I've integrated into my life over the years. It's why I'm no longer yo-yo dieting. Like I'm not gaining, dude, I would literally gain, I, I would do Atkins or something like that. And I would sure. lose 50 or sure. 60 pounds. And then I'd lose it and then I'd go back to the way I used to eat and I'd go, I'd gain it all right back. Right. And the, the last, you know, the camel that, or the straw that broke the camel's back for me was, I think I went to Walmart because I had to buy new pants cause they weren't, wouldn't fit. And I couldn't find pants big enough for me at Walmart. And they were, I think a 52, um, yep. pant. Um, and I was like, Oh fuck, I've got, this is not okay. <laughs> yeah. You kind of have to have that. Um, everybody needs kind of like that turning moment. I feel like, um, yeah. it's kind of a slippery slope. I, I feel like a lot of guys don't realize, um, how bad they feel. I'm mean, I always joke and yeah. say like, there's, you always know when somebody's eating healthy and, and working out because they will tell everybody, right. They post right. on social and like the, re <laughs> the reason is it's because they actually feel really good. And Correct. unfortunately most, I think most guys have um fallen into a trap where it's kind of like a slow you know it's like you can be th like there's 30 year olds that are going on 80 there's th you yeah. know what i mean like and uh you, it, you don't really realize how much you're underperforming um because it's kind of just become your norm and right. until you kind of take a leap of faith to actually like take on some of those activities and kind of do the uh see the other side of the coin, like you really are just kind of moving on fate. But once you get some momentum going and you realize like, Oh my God, I sleep better. I perform better. Sex is better. My health's better. Like everything's better. Yep. And it gets, it gets pretty easy. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I have followed your journey. I love it. Um, it's cool to see a guy like you turn it around and you, you, right. you're, you're living, you're living truth. Uh, you're living uh, proof of it, man. You're a testament. Right. So awesome. Absolutely. Well, Hey man, why don't you dig into it? Like Obviously, there's guys in here that are going to be, you know, maybe they're Nacho Dad, who I was back in the day. Sure. Um, maybe they're where I am today, or maybe they're, you know, they're Goggins, right? It sure. doesn't matter where on the spectrum you are. We can always do a little better. We can always enhance. We can always improve. We can always learn. Um, so that's why I love working with guys like you that, that you know, hey, there's something I'm going to pick up that's going to be like, oh, wow, I can implement that. Like like I said, little things like standing desk and I yeah. used to do the the piss right. tax. So every time I'd go take a piss, I'd, I'd do like 10 sit-ups or 10 push-ups or little things like that make a big impact. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where, again, like, how do we, so we're going to dive into some like physiology stuff and I'm going to try to not bore you and like take you to school. But I think if you understand some of these, um, these pieces, you understand how you can be a little bit more strategic and it doesn't have to be just an effort-based process. You can be a right. little bit more strategic with it. Um, we won't get into like the mindset stuff today. This is where we can have, um, I know if we were uh, chat again with some guys yep. we can we can address specific issues we can talk some of the mindset stuff because that's super important as well it's probably even like the lead domino stuff but there's a lot of guys who will get that 
like gusto to go do this. And they don't understand that there can be like a less is more, perhaps more strategic approach that is going to be more sustainable. So like right. on my end, the idea of doing something for, for you know, I'm going to do a 14 day challenge. It's like, I'm not concerned about that. It's like, Hey, what can you do for the next year, for the next two years? How can you approach this as a true lifestyle? And mm-hmm. the best way I can articulate this and again, working with business owners is you cannot approach your health and your fitness like a marketing launch. You have to approach it as a business plan. And far right. too many people were stepping in with this idea of this short-term focused, high intense effort, which is great at times. At times, it's great to go do hard things, right? To go hit some crazy distance ruck that you've never done, to do the marathon, to, you know, I like jujitsu, maybe to prep for a, for a jujitsu tournament. But the reality is if you don't have a foundation of health and a foundation of fitness and like really a system to manage that below that, when life happens and things get busy, those like higher intensity things are going to fall, but you better fall to a foundational standard of health and fitness. Right. And that's more what we're going to look at today. Um, so again, I'll try to not, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to move through this pretty quick because we can talk about sure. it later. And I really don't want to like make people think they're like going to school. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to just have this be a, I tried to cut it down to like 20 slides and feel free at any point, uh, you know, if you want to hop in Aaron and like ask a specific question to like break this sure. up. But, uh, yeah, man, we'll dive in. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, um, again, from like an assist from a systems approach, I mean, here's generally what most guys are coming to me with. They want to lose fat. They want to be lean. They want to have more energy, greater confidence. And we want to see uh, uh, biomarkers of health improve. Things like A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, testosterone, uh, liver enzymes as well. And then ideally, we want exercise and nutrition to support and not consume new life. And this is right. coming from, again, somebody who is passionate about health and fitness. It's absolutely here to serve my life, not take over it. So if you're a super busy guy and you're like looking around at like the space of fitness, you don't have to do bodybuilder shows. You don't have to paint yourself orange. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Like that doesn't have to be how you integrate with, um, with fitness. Myself, I don't even go to a gym. I work out on my deck, right? It's like right. the greatest, the greatest hack I can give anybody is to have a home gym because you're gonna absolutely save so much time. Um, so when I think of the levers, like what are the levers that we can actually pull and how do we be tactical with it? We're really gonna have exercise, lifestyle slash movement, nutrition, sleep, stress, and then alcoholism. I'm, I'm putting that separately from the nutrition. And today, I just kind of really want to dive into exercise, lifestyle, movement, and the nutrition because these are going to be the big three. We can we can touch on sleep, stress, alcohol as well if we need to. Um, so from an exercise standpoint, again, for most guys that are coming to to, um, to me for support, we do want to have um, good body composition outcomes. We are trying to increase lean mass and we're trying to lose body fat specifically. To really support this, we do want to look at exercise from a resistance training standpoint. And this is to mitigate muscle loss while we lose body fat. Right. Um, I find three to five times per week is really about where most guys need to land. So again, you don't have to train seven days a week. I myself do not train seven days a week and would fall into the fairly well-trained category. Sure. Um, a, a big thing to point out is when we approach exercises, we're not actually approaching it to burn calories, particularly in the gym and this or, or in, the, in the training section. And it's a nice little side effect, but this is something so many guys get caught up with. Hey, I burned X number of calories in my workout. And it's like, right. first off, the data, it's terribly in, inaccurate. Yeah. Um, you probably didn't burn as much as you think. And who cares? Because if you burn 300 calories working out, that 300 calories is so easy to put on. It's just a really poor mental approach. So instead, yes, there's calorie burn there, but let that just be a side effect, not the goal. So instead, we're really just looking to increase capacity um, in strength, in um, cardiovascular capacity, and really work overall workload capacity. So at a, as a starting point, when I work with clients, it's amazing. I have an intake form, and Aaron, I can't tell you how many guys on that question, how many days can you realistically dedicate 45 minutes to an hour of exercise, and they put seven days per week. Right. And this is getting into the mental side of things. That is an absolute miss. So yeah. the majority of the time, I'm going to have people cut their workload in half to begin with. So like, sure. we operate everything on minimum guaranteed standards. What is the minimum guaranteed? No bullshit. It will absolutely get done. Nothing can come up. We're going to account for the fact that a work fire could come up. 
some life stuff could happen. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says, oh, I could do four, it's like, okay, should we actually aim for three? Because that might mean Saturday night, you're doing a late workout and missing the dinner party because you got to hit the standard. Yeah, we can always do more. So I've had other guys where it's like, ooh, on that mentality, maybe two. Great. The reason this is super important is if you're somebody who struggles with their health and fitness, and I know I said I was going to stay out of the mindset stuff, but this is a this is a key one. You likely have tried and possibly failed at this before, and you're starting yeah. to subconsciously build up this belief that you can't get fit. And we need to absolutely turn that around, and we do that by actually building congruency, by setting the standard, executing on that standard over time, and then we can raise them. Right. So – from the mindset standpoint, starting low makes sense, but also we actually want to save leverage. Jumping in and saying, all right, I'm going to train seven days a week. You're really giving yourself very little um, room to actually progress. So in a progressive overload standpoint, doing more than we did last time, yes, we're going to do that in the microcosm of, of the workouts, meaning we're actually going to see progressive strength gains. But we can actually do that on a macro side, meaning like, hey, in this cycle, let's actually move to four sessions. Let's soak all the fat loss that we can get out of just three working sessions with good nutrition. And then, hey, we can then bump up to four working sessions and actually squeeze fat loss from that zone as well and squeeze strength zones versus trying to max it out right away. So um, big, big miss there with guys. Um. Lifestyle movement. So this is where, like, you you ruck. Awesome. Love it. Rucking is amazing. I think it's a mentally awesome, engaging thing. Um, it's semi-low impact. So I mm-hmm. think there's a health standpoint, it's still good. Um, for me, play fun. Like, jujitsu gets to be my movement. For somebody else, yep. it might be like, now play them with your kid, throw the football around. This stuff adds up. On the most fa- uh, basic level, it's really monitoring step count. And that's what I use with the majority of my clients. And um, I would tell everyone to take a first and add in and then an add on approach. How do we add in small daily movement? Like you mentioned uh, the, the piss break, right? So uh, with a lot of clients who are like head down at work, we use Pomodoro work style. So, hey, for 15 minutes of super focused work, take a 10 minute break, go out and walk around, get outside, get some sun in your eyes. Right. Um, the standing desk where I'm at right now, if I wasn't on this, the fact that I'm up, I'm going to be fidgeting a little bit more. And right. calorically, that's actually very significant over time. And so we're really trying to flex this non-exercise activity thermogenesis, this neat side of your metabolism. It's highly adaptable and you have a big bandwidth there. And, and once you understand that like you're not meant to be stuck at a desk, mm-hmm. you got to find creative ways to break that cycle. So. The easiest way, again, setting that guaranteed minimum standard of a step count, and then we try to add it in, gamify it. How many steps can you get at work before we actually add on maybe some dedicated cardio or even like just dedicated walks that feel like a to-do? So if you can get and figure out like, man, I got 6,500 steps in today, but I didn't do anything, like you're so far ahead of the game. Versus if you're finding yourself at the end of the day, you're checking, you're like, wow, I got 1,200 steps, it's 8 o'clock at night. It's tough. That's a calorically tough um, yeah. a hole you've put yourself in. So but, so I, I know yeah. it varies, but what is what is a, uh, an average, like what is a good number? Like what is a range? You know, 1,200 so, is probably low. I know 10,000 is some some numbers that I've seen a lot, but I know that may be a little high. What, what are your thoughts on that? I find if you, like, again, there's going to be different periods, right? So sure. like if we're in that waste, weight loss zone, like getting up to that 8,500 is like a good push. And it should yeah. feel like probably a push for most people. But ultimately, this is where like getting starting data is important because, hey, it's an improvement from where you're at. Like that's what right. we got to do. And until we yeah. hit that threshold, at some point we're on the other side of that, that calorie deficit and we'll see things go. So again, sure. saying like I'm going to do a 20,000 step challenge. Well, okay. But maybe you would have actually gotten the same exact progress on the actual goal at 9,000. Right. And it's like, cool, you just bought back time to spend with your family yep. rather than being on a treadmill or however you're right. going to do it. So yeah. this is where data really does get important. But I think in that 8,500 uh, to 12,000, I think is like a good goal. But like right. other people, I've had great success with like 6,500 steps. Sure. Um, the other benefit, I think, with like walking in low level and then rucking is mechanically when you sit at a desk, I won't go into the whole like physiology of it, but like tight, tight hips, tight pecs, like 
when we all picture like a person with poor posture, you're absolutely just going to feel better by breaking that cycle of sitting. And it's probably one of the harder pieces to actually get people to do because it's like, man, you just get stuck at that desk working. But if you can break yeah. that cycle, you are so far ahead of the game. So um, again, Pomodoro work style, work 50 head down, or if you have to do 55 and five, that's a really good tactic. Yeah. I like that. Um, all right. Nutrition. And like, this is honestly where we're going to dive into like the most of this stuff. Uh, this is, this is the, I mean, this is the key for everybody. So and two things it's important to point out for particularly fat loss, all diets for fat loss work the same, regardless of how they are marketed. If you are losing weight, you have moved into a calorie deficit, meaning you are burning more calories than you were taking in period. Right. We can use different tools and we can use different diets to help you get there. So I get asked all the time, hey, what do you think about, and then fill in the blank. What do you think about intermittent fasting? What do you think about carnivore? What do you think about vegan? To which the follow-up is like, well, what do you mean, what do I think? And then I find out their goal is like, well, do you think it would help me lose weight? It's like, right. it very well could. This is personal preference, but just understanding that there's so much ridiculous marketing out there that are going to have you convinced of all this crazy stuff. At the end of the day, if you have not lost weight, you are effectively not in a calorie deficit. I mean, I get correct. You know, Aaron, one of the funny things to me, like you hear about starvation mode thrown around yeah. that like, yeah. oh, because you're cutting your calories, your body is storing your body fat. And it's like, it's funny that starvation mode only seems to exist in the United States where we have a surplus of food. But in like exactly. starving, in nations where there's like not enough food, people actually starve. So metabolic adaptation, which we can talk about here in a bit, is real and your metabolism will adjust as you know calories get low. And it's not all about just pulling out your calories. But you will have to create that deficit at some point. Um, if you're looking to make some tangible shifts in our body composition, we are going to need to audit our diet. We're going to want to do this in a way that makes sense for you um, from a personality standpoint. And then the biggest thing is we're going to need to begin to standardize our diet. And we'll kind of dive into this a little bit. So okay. um, this is kind of like a general framework. So I look at it as we need to audit intake. How are we going to do that? For uh, a lot of clients, I use photo food journaling. But that's a really honest way to just be able to reflect week to week. Like, what am I actually doing? This is the whole out of sight, out of mind. Oh, I ate pretty good. Heard it a million times. Sure. But you don't know what you ate. Other people, my fitness pal, um, and actually tracking macros, if they want to get a little yeah. bit deeper into that. Um, other people, it's literally just like we use a hand measured framework to create a balanced meal. So we have a portion of proteins, carbs, and fats. So like that is that audit to intake. Then we do need to fuel to perform. And this is where we need to have some like semblance of that meal structure with proteins, fats, and carbs. That protein, it's going to support your muscles. So again, to be something as simple as a couple of poems, we do need to have some fats to support um, um, uh, testosterone production. And then obviously carbohydrate, we don't need to cut carbs. Carbohydrates are super useful to actually fuel training. Um, so again, we can have a nice little mix of all of those. And again, we can use that basic, if you look at the left, like palm of protein, scoop of mm -hmm. carbs, just the vegetables, some of fats to just create some basic meals. Then we need to fit your fuel. So you mentioned that you don't eat breakfast. You have found a really good way for you to effectively manage your energy uh, and your nutrition. So right. if you are somebody who wakes up and it's like chaos in your house because you got four kids under four and like maybe you don't do breakfast, I don't know. So fit, fit your fuel. Like, how are you going to create structure in your personal circumstances? So this idea that everybody needs to intermittent fast. Cool. What if you wake up and you're like really hungry every day and breakfast is my favorite meal. Right. Sounds like a long-term lifestyle strategy for you would be to enjoy breakfast. Yep. If you wake up and you're like, I don't feel like eating when I wake up. My stomach is just, I don't know. Cool. Don't eat breakfast. Make it work for you. And then we need to fuel the gaps. And this is where, you know, being strategic with what supplements that you personally need to just kind of fill in those gaps. And we bring this all together to create go-to meals. And go-to meals are going to be unique to you. They have to be foods that you enjoy. They have to be simple to make. This is not the diet plan. Here you go. I'm going to white knuckle through this thing that I don't like for 12 weeks to lose a little bit of weight. Let's create again a foundation of eating that actually serves you. And this brings us to this idea of, of standardizing your intake. So this is probably the, the most impactful, important thing that I think you can do around nutrition is begin to bring some structure. I'm not actually suggesting that you just eat three meals a day. For some people, five meals are going to be great. This is just an example to show you the possibility and the, the, the utility in bringing some structure. 
So on the far left, we have standardized instruction. Imagine if you actually ate that terrible looking meal of plain chicken, plain vegetables, some olive oil, and a sweet potato. If you ate that three times a day, every single day, you would have extreme structure, right? You would have the same amount of proteins, fats, and carbs, and calories, vitamins, and sure. minerals. Like, it would be very structured, It'd be very boring. Most people, we mm -hmm. don't need to do this. But on the flip side, here's where a lot of people get in trouble where they find themselves, and Aaron, this was probably described more you back in yep. the day. Yep. Lots of novelty, lots of variety. If we yep. have a different meal at every uh, every meal, like burgers one day, even like a healthy salad one day, if it's just all over the map, you're not really going to have an idea of how much or more importantly, like where we can make adjustments from. And that's going to be the key. There's going to be different periods of your life where like you get and need more food and you can have more variety of novelty. So for most people, when most guys, when you like, look at this kind of spectrum, we do need to bring ourselves further to the left. Yeah. And this is where we do have to create what I call your EOS, your personal eating operating system. Again, Aaron, you figured out some of this that like, hey, breakfast doesn't work. For me, I figured out that like I start my day best with they are higher fat, higher protein, low carb breakfast. It serves me really sure. well. This is my personal EOS. How much structure versus how much novelty to allow you to turn it into an actual lifestyle is going to be specific to you. I keep it pretty boring because I'm just so lazy, so lazy about food. It's just, yeah. it's, it's falling into more utility for me. So like, as an example, I eat eggs every morning and then I'll eat eggs. I'll make over easy. Cause I'm like, ah, it'd be too much work to get the bowl out and scramble them. Right. And I'll eat, I'll eat over easy eggs until one day I feel like I'm going to throw up if I eat over easy eggs again. So then I make scrambled, right? right? That's enough novelty to keep me interested for breakfast. My yeah. other meals are more expanded. Now, for a lot of guys, that seems intimidating because you're focused on all the stuff that you're going to give up. But you got to remember, go-to meals are the meals that you enjoy. And then we can start to figure out, well, how do we create novelty from structure? So if we look at the, the, the picture on the left, fajitas, right? We got some, we could have some good chicken. We could have some good um, grass-fed beef. We could have some shrimp. We've got a bunch of vegetables, again, home cooked. So we've controlled the, the, the oils that are going in and we have some tortillas. If we were to actually punch that out in like a calculator, we'd come out with some protein, fats, and carbs and some, some vegetables, of course, vitamins and minerals. But we could actually transform that into like a completely new and novel tasting dish it's probably pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. So if instead of those tortillas, we actually had some rice and instead of like cumin and coriander or whatever goes in the fajitas, we actually went with like an Asian inspired um, sure. sauce. And maybe we throw in a couple different veggies, like some, um, you know, some, some green onions and some scallions or whatever. That could actually taste like a completely different meal, but you're still probably within some structure that's pretty damn close where you're still going to be able to make adjustments as needed. So that again is where I challenge you. I was like, hey, how do we make novelty from structure? Now, here, here's the value in this. So if you're a phase one guy, and Aaron, I would have called you a phase one guy uh, sure. when you, when, when you uh, Nacho Aaron, who would have been a phase Nacho one Aaron, guy. Yep. <laughs> and a phase one guy just doesn't really have um, a lot of structure, maybe not a lot of activity. Again, maybe sleep. Alpha, like doesn't really have any of these pieces working. So um, this, this is a this is a client Andrew. He would be a phase one guy when we started working together. He's doesn't really have any of these pieces um, in place, and so it can get intimidating to think like, okay, I gotta do all of these things. The reality is, as you just start to add in or start to optimize your own exercise. So if you're optimizing what you're doing, and if, or if we're adding it in. And if we just start to bring in some of those lifestyle activities and we just start to bring some structure, you're actually going to naturally move into a calorie deficit and you're actually going to see some weight loss without it feeling like it's this super specific, um, difficult thing. So like in his situation, he was 46 pounds down in three months. And again, it didn't feel like this massive overhaul of right. extreme detail because we're just moving those big pillars. And again, this is yeah. probably... Um, how it felt for you to go from, you said you were 350 at one point? Yeah. Yeah, so like 350 to 300 was just kind of like doing some due diligence on some basic yep. stuff. So 
keep that in mind that like that's going to happen for you if you're kind of a phase one guy who's maybe higher in body fat, doesn't really have any real exercise structure, doesn't really have any structure to his diet, um, has, you know, is, is not getting a lot of steps. Just doing some basic stuff, we're going to see some really good progress on those lower levels of leverage. Yeah. Now, the real value in bringing that structure to the training routine and to the nutrition is we can avoid what happens for most people. So here's how most people are going to approach fat loss. They're over here on that. And, and when I say fat loss, I'm putting fat loss slash health. Because there's sure. all sorts of health factors that are going to come with doing the activities that are going to um, create that fat loss situation. So most people, you're over here on the novel and variety side. They know they need to lose weight. They know they need to improve their health. They don't know. They don't have structure. So instead they go and they lean hard into a tactic. So I'm going to do, and you'll notice these are polar, polar opposites. I, I could have put eat seven meals a day here too. So they're going to go keto, they're going to go carnivore, they're going to go vegan, they're going to intermittent fast, they're going to eat seven meals a day. They're going to do a tactic with some idea to pull them way over here to the left, way over to this deficit side mm -hmm. where fat loss does occur. But the reality is without that structure, for most guys, it's too restrictive. It's too temporary, but then more importantly, they have no way of exiting and landing here where they actually maintain that weight loss both calorically and as a lifestyle. So instead, they swing way back over here into the novelty side. And now we just repeat this cycle over and over and over. But if we bring structure both to the training and to the nutrition, we can actually effectively step into that deficit zone. And then we can strategically step out and land here in this maintenance zone. Now, where this gets really important is the further you go along, or depending on where your starting point is, you might be a what I'm going to call a phase two guy. Well, a phase two guy has to be a little bit more detailed. So um, let me backtrack and just say, here's the benefits of that standardized EOS. Yeah, right. First, we can strategically treat. Okay, So when you get your diet set up, whatever thing that you're thinking about, I can't have, you're going to more easily be able to have. Sure. So, do I have a beer every once in a while? Cool. Uh, a Modelo, let's say, is about 116 calories of carbs. Once you understand a scoop of white rice or a piece of bread is like 85 calories, like not calling it a swap for swap, but it's pretty damn close. Sure. Right? So, by having that structure, you can actually push and pull and bring in some of those foods that you think like, gosh, how am I ever going to have this again? Well, you don't have to necessarily. You can have it strategically because we're able to have some ability to pull it in. You're also going to save yourself tons of time and mental energy here. So many guys are like overly consumed with this. Whereas at this point, Aaron, I know you're running on habits, systems, and you've probably, believe it or not, even though you show up as like this health and fitness guy, myself included, I tell everybody, I put very little thought into it. Right. I don't, I don't, I'll tell you the people who are thinking about it, but the guys aren't there yet. You're right. You're researching diets, you're trying all this different stuff. Once you get there, it's like, I, I have no mental stress over this. And, and it's, then, it's the exact opposite. Like I used to, I think I mentioned it before, but it was me. I was the yo-yo. I would do yeah. Atkins or, or low carb or, or whatever. And I would lose a whole bunch of weight and then I would skip. I, I, there was no maintain. I went from the far left to the far right. And yep. I went right back to pizza and ice cream and all the other things. And that first 50 pounds to your point, I didn't change much. I just, I did the, the, the health side. Like I ate a little better and I moved my body a little bit. And, and then I started building these other systems because honestly, I had a coach, like I had somebody yep. like you that I worked with and, and it wasn't boiling the ocean. It was like making small changes and being consistent with those changes. And that's when, you know, now my swing now is, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds at the most, but usually it's five pounds, right? I'm not gaining a, a pant size ever. Like right. in, you know, three plus years, I haven't changed pants, which used to, I had like sections in my closet that was, yeah, this yeah. is this guy and this version and this version. And depending on the day or the week or the month that I showed up would depend on, oh, okay, now I'm in this section of clothes. Now I'm triple XL shirt and, you know, size 48 pants. I can't wear this other stuff. We'll keep them there for when I, when I do lose weight again, or yeah. I'll keep the fat ones. So when I get fatter again, so I had it yeah. all in my closet. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And but going the the the, the route that you did, where you finally like, okay, they said that I love that boil in the ocean. Yeah. When you finally remove away from that, like that's how you actually kill that version of you, or like right. that guy's gone. Yeah. Like that threw away the clothes. Like right. Like he doesn't or, exist anymore. No. And again, that's not just psychologically. If you approach this correctly, like again, crash dieting and like hoping for fast results when we talk about normatives here in a second for um it's not just like this like woo woo like mental thing it's also physiologically like right. there's physiological change that you're fighting up against that like those hunger hormones are raging like of course you're in a rebound sure. so it is literally like a, a smarter not harder and so like here's here's an example of kind of leaning into that so like here's a phase two guy and so if you look at like the photo of this guy on the far left a lot of people will be like man i just be happy i've had plenty of people i've had clients say like man i wish i'd just be happy to look like the guy on the left well sure. okay he doesn't have very good energy. He's not very strong. He's just like not feeling great. So for him, we actually want to get to a place where like we have a robust amount of calories to use. And so by actually approaching things physically and understanding that there may be periods where you are actually trying to recover your metabolism, you're going to be able to get to a point where you have a much larger bandwidth of calories and training to exist with where it's far easier. So a lot of guys, like if we were say you're on the left, like, yeah, he's skinny, but like you wouldn't like call him like ripped or muscular necessarily. And if he sure. tries to get there, he's going to be hanging on to that by a thread. And this is a lot right. of people. They've whittled themselves down. So for him to actually get to this point, this third frame where he's actually bigger and leaner. And these are the same pair of shorts, by the way, which I always find hilarious. Um, <laughs> fun of legs. Um, so what, what's cool for a guy like this is, so in this in range, and I could pull it up, but like his calories, like here we got to the where he's eating four thousand calories, right? Right, and yeah, he put on a little bit of belly fat, but in doing this phasic approach where we actually built caloric leverage to prepare him to get lean, he gets to now he went from one seventy six up to two hundred five intentionally, and then we took him down to one ninety three. But now at this 193, he's still got a mountain of calories to exist on. So he's sure. got tons of energy. He doesn't feel like he's trying to hold on to that that fat loss. And like it's something that's going to slip away from him if he has a weekend where he goes out and goes on a trip. He now has a much bigger bandwidth. So getting to that point where understanding that you may need to take a phasic approach and there might be periods where you are actually going to intentionally drive calories up to recover that metabolism to actually effectively move back here rather right. than just trying to live here and when you do that the end result is it's actually really easy to maintain your results right so again if you were to look at a guy like me with my my physique or even a guy like you Aaron at, at your point again probably doesn't feel like it's that hard to maintain where we're at. Right. And it's because you've taken a time, but also probably a strategic approach to get there. Where a lot of guys, again, you're so invested in getting there quickly that you pull all of that, all that leverage all at once, drive yourself down. And now you are just trying to do everything you can to hold on to it, but it's going to be physiologically, you're going to get tons of physiological pushback. Right. So again, slower, more strategic, and then you can actually end in a position where it's easily to maintain. So sure, that's my, that's my uh, my my school presentation, if you will. And then obviously we can jam on any of that if there's any of that that didn't make sense. No, it makes perfect sense. You know, obviously as 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 men are 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 getting to this place, and and we're gonna have a a Q and A session um, uh, because of the technology didn't work out today, and we'll have a, we'll have a live Q and A session, but. I know for me, one of the things that, that I've struggled with, you know, as I was making these changes is, you know, eating in restaurants, like it's so hard to eat in restaurants. Cause to your point, you don't know what oils they put in it. You know, they, mm -hmm. they you can look up in my fitness pal, almost any restaurant and there's estimates, but yeah. it's, it's just not accurate. We, we know that, but you know, I travel a lot, right? I travel, I was just in Miami this week. Um, and, and I have to be intentional about what I eat. And I know that. Hey, if, if it says the estimate is 500, it's probably 
double that sometimes, right? It's, it, the portions are bigger. <laughs> they're, they're adding all this other stuff, butters and oils and, and all the things that you have no idea that they're there. Um, so so I'm, I'm intentional about it. So why don't, talk a little bit about how to be not, not you don't have to dive too far into it, but just as you travel, as you're as you're eating in restaurants, like it's not about the mindset of lacking, like what am I not going to do? Um, but also, how can I be successful and go to a restaurant? Like it's not it's not like you can't go to a restaurant. Like, it, it's not that you can't have a beer. It's not that you can't, you know, have a date night with your wife or you can't have ice cream. It's not about that. It's just about making your the rest of your life so so structured so that when you have the ice cream, you're, you're not even worried about it. I have an ice cream. So right. what? Like it's not one ice cream is not going to kill me because the rest of the time I'm consistent. Yeah, I had a giant, I had a giant gluten-free chocolate chip cookie yesterday um, <laughs> at the coffee shop. Uh, yeah, so um, I think the one, the one thing that I mentioned is understanding to get where you want to go versus maintaining. Sure. It's going to take a level of intensity, intentionality that is a little bit more extreme, which yep. is counterintuitive to what I said at first, right? That yep. first phase one and then phase two. Um, that said. As far as like traveling goes, here's kind of like the tips I use because I do have a lot of a lot of guys that work with that travel. Um, if you're traveling for business, try to pick a hotel that's to a Whole Foods. Right. Right. Try to get it as close to Whole Foods as you can because you're gonna be able to go in there and hit their hot bar and you're gonna be able to assemble a hand measured portion. Right. As far as the travel itself, this is where so many guys screw up before they've even they've even got to where they go. You gotta win the airport. Like Sitting at a bar in an airport, talking to somebody you're never going to see again, right? Drinking three beers before you, or two beers before your flight to then grab a Jack and Coke on the flight. Like, mm -hmm. you're kidding yourself, man. Like, you can absolutely get through that experience without doing that. You're not missing anything, right? So, rather than that, like, walk the airport. Like, if you have a two hour, you're there an hour and a half early, like, think of the different outcomes there. You take an hour and a half where you actually walk and drive that neat up. Listen to some music, enjoy yourself, or you sit at a, a random bar, you're packed in, your luggage is close to you, it's not even comfortable, you're talking to somebody you don't know that you're never going to see again, and you have some calorie bomb meal. Yeah. Like, you're already behind. So, like, win the airport. Yeah. That can mean bringing, like, a go pack of, like, some, some beef sticks, some electrolytes, like, whatever you need to do. And then, again, like, from an eating out standpoint, if you're there for business, like if you have the opportunity to take the location, pick it. Like first off, it's like you're showing some initiative, right? You've already done some research. Yeah. You should be able to find one or two things at almost any restaurant that you can make work that again just fit some basic structure of like meat, vegetables, produce, and really just avoiding like the calorie bomb um foods when you're traveling. Right. Like if you have the option between some, you know some um unbattered fish tacos versus fettuccine alfredo it's literally <laughs> about in that moment in time making the best worst choice possible it might sure. not be ideal but you can make a best worst choice possible yeah and then if you do that and again you bring like you're just intentional with it, it it's really going to be a odd issue um yeah. you can make those requests right like you might have to ask for like an extra serving of protein extra serving serving of produce hey can you hold the oil on like or light oil on that like make those requests people like people don't give a shit they're they're you're so used to this at this point so yeah. like, you should absolutely be able to go out and, and and mitigate that um and then like i said if you can do a little bit of research like in the town that you're going into try to find like an actual place where like hey this has a a meal that would actually be beneficial to me. Is it close? Is it convenient? If you can book, you know, the hotel near those places, like leverage those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually you can find, you know, grilled chicken or something like yeah. that, you know, and honestly, I usually stay away from salads because salads, usually the, the, the dressings they put on those things, yeah. it's just full of sugar and all sorts of crap. Right. You know, and yeah, that's one of the reasons why I've, <laughs> I've picked up rucking because I, yeah. I carry a rock anywhere. So, you know, I've got the sure. rocks, um, and yeah, I yeah. use those. So wherever I'm at, if I'm in the airport, I've got my laptop and, and I've probably got 20, 25 pounds just in, in my, my normal shit. And I'm walking through the airport and I walk mm -hmm. fast um, and yep. I'll just pace. I'll walk back and forth and listen to a, a podcast or whatever. Um, and, and the other piece that I, I think make sure that people don't forget is, is coffee, right? So again, I, I talked about not, not uh, eating breakfast, but I, I do have coffee, mm -hmm. um, but I actually have coffee like yeah, black yeah. coffee 
Um, I have desserts. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't get a frappuccino or any of the pumps or any of that stuff. No room. Yeah. It's just coffee. And I, I have a little stevia sweetener. So how I'm successful is I take, uh, you know, a, a stevia sweetener with me at all times. I have, I was looking for a bag. I don't have it in here, but I have meat sticks that I buy paleo meat sticks that are, you know, non GMO and grass fed and all that kind of stuff. And I take those with me everywhere because sometimes at six o'clock in the morning, I'm hungry. Um, I don't normally eat breakfast, but if I do, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to go to. I'm going to have an egg. I'm going to go to, you know, yep. um, some eat that type of thing. Or if it's, if I get a layover, cause again, last night I ended up flying and the, the plane got delayed and I didn't get home till 11 o'clock Well, I'm on the plane and I'm hungry. Well, I yeah. don't want to eat their cookie, um, yeah. because it's, it's there. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pulling out, you know, uh, uh, nuts or, or my, my, my meat sticks. And, and, and I, so I have those things with me everywhere yep. I go and yeah, I always your, refill them before tools. I go. Gotta yeah, have your travel, you have your, to. Your travel tools. And this is yeah. where preparation, you know, um, preparation is the key to victory, right? Like, yeah, I do. If I'm starving, I'm going to want to eat all the bad stuff. So like to have sure. some of those, those jerky sticks to leverage, um, you made a great point earlier as well about the salads. Um, that is one where, uh, I, I hate to see people get tripped up because a, they're making some, they're making a choice that they think is healthy. B it's probably not even something they really want, but they're right. doing it for, you know, a good outcome. And uh, a lot of times, yeah, salads can be calorie bombs. So you can even just do a little bit of, like auditing in real time, like where you're at. Like, again, even if the even if the calorie loads aren't going to be accurate, they're not, right? But like you can still pull up a menu and at least get an idea because you might be surprised like, oh, wow, yeah, like that chicken salad that I was going to buy because I thought I was making a healthy choice. I didn't even, it doesn't even sound that good, but like, holy cow, like a TGIF Friday is like, that's 1,800 calories. And you're like, it's like oh, a shit, pizza. Boy. It's crazy. Yeah, and you're like, so you could have literally been like, oh, I could have had the flatbread and been right. ahead of this. So you can even just do a little bit of, you know, I call it um, the ass method. So audit, and then you got to swap or skip, yeah. right? And um, just do a little bit of like, like I said, most menus at this point in, in chain restaurants are going to be online. So like pull it up because you might surprise yourself and be like, oh, actually something that I actually would enjoy more might be, might actually serve me better. It's higher in protein, it's lower in total calories, and you can make those adjustments in real time. Um, but ultimately, like the mantra of like, you gotta make the best, worst choice possible. Yeah. Right? And this is where a lot of guys do fall into the trap of, well, I had to eat something. Okay, and then you got chicken Alfredo and two margaritas. <laughs> it's right. like, you know, you could have, you could have had a light beer or two, and that would have put you at, you know, say 200, I don't know, 35 calories or something versus right. two margaritas at, you know, 1200 or whatever. So right. really trying to make that best, worst choice possible and not falling into this idea of like, ah, well, I'm out of, I'm out of routine. I had to eat something. Yep. Um, I talk a lot with clients about, you know, we do work on mindset stuff and this is where we can get to where like making identity based decisions is super supportive. Um, and this takes some some work and some time, but like getting to where you have hard lines that are supported by identity based decisions. So like, I am not a smoker, right? So like, it's not like I'm going to, oh man, I just happened to be at the, like the, the smoking station. So I had one, right? right. Like it's not going to happen. Right. Well, you can, have, you can start to set those same hard lines, um, for things in nutrition, right? And you can get silly with this. So to give you an example, like I do not eat fast food. Right? Right. I haven't had a McDonald's since I was like 20 years old, but yeah. I will eat burger lounge. Luke burger lounge is fast food. Yeah, actually it is. But I've sectioned it off in my mind that it's actually not. And I'm okay with that because I will occasionally have that, but still looping myself into that mentality of, I don't eat fast food. And then putting these other places in that bucket still allows me to drive like that identity based decision. Sure. And so you can get a little creative and like little hacks and workarounds to where, you know, I don't do this, but, and you could have that exception, right? And like, you can get that as tight or you can get that as wide as you need. Um, and then it starts to remove the possibility. So I could be super hungry and as stupid as this makes it sound, McDonald's doesn't exist. I'm starving, but I'm not eating that. But yet I would eat burger lunch, right? Like, right. That almost doesn't make sense, but it does keep yeah. me honest from a, many of those things. So again, you can enroll yourself in these little loops and games that, that um, create guardrails to, to support you on those decisions. 
Yeah, you know, it, you, you say that, and, and so I've got three kids, and they're 10, 12, and 15. Um, my 10-year-old, until I think like two weeks ago, had never been to McDonald's, ever. Okay, yeah, yeah. I never grew because, up. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because we made these changes, and, and yeah, yeah. I started it with me, and my wife made changes too, and then we implemented it with our kids. So we don't eat fast food like that. Like, And if we do eat fast food, it's, you know, we've 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 made decisions on which ones we do so we're eating you know chick-fil-a and and higher end ones and again but even that it's fried like it's we're not pretending it's healthy but it's way the heck better than than mcdonald's on quality of food and and things like that i literally haven't been to mcdonald's in in some containers correct i've got some containers but yeah Yeah. the same thing like i i really don't eat fast food not not very free I, unfortunately, in, in in eating out, it means, especially as a family of five, when we go out to eat, it's not cheap, um, right. because I'm not going to fast food, and we're not going to to low end sure. places. We're going to, you know, there's a restaurant here in, in in Austin called like Salt Trader, and there's there's Jack Allen, and they're all farm to table type type meat restaurants that they don't add a bunch of oils and they don't do those things. So when we're going out to eat, we're going there. The unfortunate thing to that is financially, sure. it's more expensive. Yes. Um, so if we want to not do that, then we eat at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that, you know, obviously like there's a social com- component to, to eating, of course. Um, and to that, you know, like if you have those opportunities, um, to like host the barbecue, like do a grill right. out, man, like you can be social that way. But I would tell people once you get to where you want to go, remember, you're going to have a little bit more bandwidth that like you should be able to make eating out. I don't want to say like a super regular and frequent thing. And off of this will depend on where you're at. You in Austin, I'm in San Diego. I absolutely have more access to healthy restaurant sure. um, food versus when I grew, where I grew up in the Midwest. You know, the majority of food, even at the nice restaurants was like bar food fried style. I right. still made it work there. It's just going to be a little tougher. So like depending on your situation, right? You got to find just like I talked about go-to meals. You got to have go-to restaurants. Sure. The more you even bring structure to that, the better. And so like if you have a restaurant where you go consistently and you're getting the consistent meal, right there you have some structure that at a time period when you need to make an adjustment, you have a reference point. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, man, this is awesome. I appreciate it. This is how do how do guys get started? Uh, how do they reach out to you? And, and if they if they want more information, obviously, we're going to have the, the session next week where, where guys can can do the Q&A stuff. But, you know, how, how do they find out more? Um, yeah, man, they can go to uh, fitmanproject.com. Um, you know, I have a free training that's kind of similar to this. I will walk you through it in a little bit. Um, maybe more detail um, and connect me on LinkedIn, Facebook, shoot me a message. Um, I tell everybody, man, like, and again, I think you'll agree with this. Like it's not as hard as you think, but the benefits are greater than you realize. And yeah, it's just tough. You got to take the leap. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, for me, I didn't realize how bad I felt. Like I really didn't. Like I, yeah. I, I had no idea like how, like, I, dude, I took heartburn medication all the time. And right. again, like I was, my blood pressure was high and everything was off. And I, and I, I didn't know how bad I felt until I started feeling good. So now like this weekend I was in Miami at a conference and, and I had a few drinks, man. And, and it's not like I got smashed or, 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 or you know, like in my twenties, it was, just having a few and just enough, I will feel it for the next few days. Oh, because yeah. I know because I know what my normal is. So mm-hmm. I know I don't sleep as well. Um, everything about it is off. And again, it's not like I'm hungover. Like I right. just know how I feel and what good feels like. So yeah. I know when I'm off. Um, yeah. and, and I'm definitely off for a, a few days at least. Um, yeah. especially if I have more than a few drinks. Um, sure. in, in, a, in a single night. Yeah, man. Yeah, and it's. You know, I think about it as far as the, um, like not feeling your best and, and again, kind of the, the complacency and like we get comfortable with where we're at and yeah. it's like one way you can look at it is like, take a step back and look at it and be like, when was the last time I did and start listening right. to some things? Because yeah. again, you, your ability to go ruck, right? Um, how old are you? 45. Yeah. So 45 year old guy, you're out like putting miles on like. But yet at 30 or whenever it was, 35, the idea of doing that, and it's like, you can really reverse age this. And I feel like there is an experience of life that so many guys are are missing out on. You know, I'm I'm 39, like I'm still doing jujitsu. The other day I'm on a mat and I'm rolling with this kid and I realized we're talking about 
exercise and I'm like, first time I've ever had to say this. And I'm like, man, look, when I was your age, I go, listen, because he wanted to get bigger. He's, I mean, he's a big kid. He's 190 pounds, 20, sure. 20 years old or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, the key is I'm like, just don't get hurt. I'm like, I've had some yeah. injuries and like getting hurt really limits you. And he's like, well, how old are you? And I'm like 39. And he's like, just mind blown. And he's like, that's my dad's age. And like, <laughs> and I realized like his idea of his dad doing this was so obtuse to him. And it, yep. I likely have an idea of, you know, his dad's state, but it's like, yeah, to be able to know like the erupting that you're doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going to Yosemite here at the end of the month, hopefully. And it's like. To, to not get to see stuff because you can't go on the hikes, right? right? To not get be able to like actually like run around and play football with your kid. Yeah. So I think there's a lost capacity that a lot of guys have unfortunately succumbed to, and they don't really realize how far down they've gone. And uh, until you start working at it and turn it around and get to the other side, can you really look yeah. back and be like, holy cow, I can't believe I was there. Then you heartburn medication at, you know, th- at 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it, it, it's insane. You know, the, the amount of things that I do now with my kids, you know, I'm playing softball in, yeah, a, in a softball league and, and I do jujitsu too. Um, I'm, I'm not as consistent because I travel, but like, uh, Jocko's coming to town and, uh, I don't yeah. remember next month or something, and they're going to have an open, open mat. Um, and then he's going to sign books and things like that. So I sure. sent it to my, my, uh, uh jujitsu, uh, instructor and, and my son. So I'm going to go there and do that. And nice. I've had the same thing. I've rolled with people in jujitsu and like I can roll three or four, you know, five minute sessions. And of course I'm tired, but I, oh, I don't yeah. have to sit out. Um, I yeah. have enough energy to keep going. Of course, I'm not going to be the same level, but I, I can, I can keep going. And there's mm-hmm. other guys that go on and they're stopping. And, and I had one guy that did that and, and he's like, man, he's like, you just kicked my ass. Like how, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm 45. He's like, holy shit, dude. I'm like 26 and I can't yeah. keep up with you. Yeah. Dude, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of like 30 going on 50 and a lot of 50 yeah. going on 70. And you know, the reality is like wherever you're at, like you can absolutely reverse and turn things back. Yes. It's easier the sooner we do it. But, you know, like if you want to age well, it's like, it's like it does start, you know, in your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s. Like, yep. I was hiking in Utah, um, the, uh, this guy here, if you can see it, the, the main mm-hmm. big arch, delicate arch. And we got up and we did a sunrise hike. We get there, you know, it's dark. Here comes the sun. There's a big group of people that have made it up there. Right as the sun comes out, here comes this couple. They just make it, like, right as it comes out, like a movie, like perfect timing. Right. If I had to guess. I think they're in their nineties. Right. I'm like maybe eighties. Cause it just, I'm like 90 year olds doing this, but they, I mean, wow. like, and I'm like, that's living well, man. Like think yeah. of the experiences that that couple is having together, like through life. Because like, if you're doing that, like think of your, think of your European vacation. Like yep. you're just seeing more, you're doing more. You're just, your body is the vehicle that takes you through all these experiences of life. You don't have to treat it like this temple, but understanding like it is the vehicle that allows you to experience it. So you better get in good working order because it's just way more fun. Yeah, you can't. It's the only body you got, you know, and I see my parents. My dad is 75 and, you know, he's got some heart problems and he mm-hmm. can't walk across the room without being out of breath. He can't sit yeah. down for very long. Like all the he can't do any of this stuff. So it's it's a struggle for him. And and. I don't want that. I, I want to be 75 and, you know, climbing 14ers and scuba diving yeah. and, and, yeah. and doing all that. Right. I, I don't want to be that age is a number. Of course it gets harder. And as I've gotten older, I've had to add, you know, testosterone and hormone replacement and all these other types of things. But that's because my body, you know, it is what it is. It is getting older. Yeah. It takes yeah. me longer to recover. I have to be yeah. smarter yeah. about things. Like I can't drink like I did in my twenties. Not that I want sure. to, um, you know, in my twenties, I'd go out drinking five nights a week and, you know, be at work at seven o'clock in the morning. Perfectly <laughs> yeah. fine. I probably smelled yeah. like a brewery, but you know, I was fine. Yeah. Um, now th- I'd die like physically, I would oh, not yeah. l- enjoy that. Um, I have, like I said before, I have two drinks and I, I can, I can tell the next day and, and for days after that, I'm not, I'm not optimally running. So yeah, I yeah. definitely have to be more intentional about it. <laughs> yeah. So imagine like, gosh, like imagine if you're actually like not treating the system well, like where you're right. at. So dude, I, again, I like, I took my hat to you, Aaron. So like, you know, like a lot of people in this industry, like I personally haven't struggled with weight. Right. I yeah. have, um, I'm, I've been fortunate to work with 
hundreds of guys and do blame my, or do uh, consider myself to be a highly naturally empathetic person and um but like I tip my hat to anybody who like really turns it around because it's it's not necessarily easy. It's like I always right. tell people it's like this is going to be the hardest easy thing you've ever done. Sure. <laughs> like that's how I kind of think about it. And so, you know, to see a guy like yourself who was, you know, again at that at that point of, you know, 350 and again, you have all the excuses, man. You got kids, you have family, you have a career. It's very yeah. easy to think that like I'm stuck in this, but you uh you stepped up and uh, turned it around and again you're getting to uh, experience all the rewards of it which is which is awesome man absolutely well hey hey dude i appreciate it this is awesome uh i, I i'm i'm looking forward to the q a next week and uh uh until next time brother i appreciate the time all right cool man